This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Goes on from now until the uh, hour of midnight Eastern Standard Time. I'm Alex Bennett. I'm your humble and obedient host. And in about a half hour from right now, we're going to check in with the Citizens Panel. But right now, let's check in with an old friend. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but when I want to get perked up and feel positive and feel good about things and wake up, I call Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> I'm a blast of caffeine and cocaine, yes. Yes, right, right. You're better than the real thing, yeah. <laughs> yes, I had a bub's habit, and, uh, <laughs> you know, my name is Alex, and I'm powerless over bubs. <laughs> my God, I saw, I was on Facebook last night, I saw a picture of uh, your show uh, from the 80s with Kravitz and Tree. yes. Tree looked like a fetus. He looked so young. It was a <laughs> now, you have to explain Tree because most people don't know who Tree is. You know, Tree, is he still doing you know, Actually, I don't like uh, the way that sounds. Yeah, there is something wrong with my system. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something here. We, we've got bubs. Let me, let me change that file. Okay? All right? Okay, all right. Export uh, the file, and we're gonna make it a. Uh, we're gonna make it. Uh, oh, what are we gonna do here? Let's change the uh, the uh, uh, sample rate. Okay, and change it down to thirty-two. There we go. Okay, and let me take it out of stereo and put it in a mono. And let's see here. Okay. And I'm generating what it is is a new uh, a new file uh, for this, uh, so we can uh, we can play a better version of it, you know. Show you how we do things technically on this program, uh, because if somehow that this program is creating a a hiss of sorts, and we have no idea I have no idea why to be honest with you. Uh, let me see here, Gabnet interviews. Uh, there we go. And I'll go over to Gabnet Interviews here. Uh, uh, where are we? Uh, Gabnet Interviews. There we go. And here's Bub's, the latest one. Let's see if this one uh, isn't uh, going to have any hiss on it. Let's, uh, let's check it out here. Let me see here. Okay, we'll stop that. And we'll start it over again. Let's see what happens. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but when I want to get perked up and feel positive and feel good about things and wake up, I call Larry Bubbles Brown? <laughs> I'm a blast of caffeine and cocaine, yes. Yes, I... right, right. You're better than the real thing, yeah. <laughs> yes, I had a bub's habit, and, uh, <laughs> you know, my name is Alex, and I'm powerless over bubs. <laughs> My God, I saw, I was on Facebook last night, I saw a picture of uh, your show uh, from the 80s with Kravitz and Tree. Yes. Tree looked like a fetus, he looked so young. It was a <laughs> now, you have to explain Tree, because most people don't know who Tree is. You know, Tree, is he still doing comedy at all? No, he got out years ago. Uh, he was he the tried smart, acting he was for a while, was, and uh, then, yeah. then I guess I think he's totally out. So. He was in, uh, yeah. what, what film was he in? Something like Creep House or some movie he played. Yes, with. where he played Cheezo the Clown. Yeah, and uh, he, um, uh, you know, he had, a, he had a movie career going there for a little bit, you know. He got a few parts for a while, and then, uh, but he had a, uh, he had a great, he had this great character when in a stand-up, and uh, God, he must have been about six feet six. Yeah, had a shaved head, wore a leather jacket, and was very with, intimidating. With, by looking. the way, with per, with uh, a strand of pearls in the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
And he had a big following for a while. Oh, know. yeah. No, I, I had him on all my shows, and he was, he was very popular on my show. So, mm -hmm. so what's he doing now? Uh, he is on Facebook, but I think he told me years ago, I worked with him about 15 years ago, and he was just about quitting then. So, Yeah. So, but if what, only, what did, what did if he, only we could get out? <laughs> what did he go into obscurity? I mean, uh, you know, he must have gone into doing something else. Well, I think his wife worked, and I think they bought a house. I think they got out of the Bay Area, so they're out in the woods somewhere. Yeah. Well, I, you know, uh, if you ever see him, do you ever see him? No, I guess not. No, but I'm going to contact him on Facebook. Though I can't get hold of him. So, yeah. yeah. I saw that uh, somebody who was who is it sent me a picture of Spud who used to work at the radio station with me, who who kept everything. You know, there's stuff I never kept pictures and things like that. And now people send me pictures of myself that I haven't seen in you know twenty thirty years, mm -hmm. and uh, so I I have a now decent file. And Spud sent me a picture. What we did is we went around and all the people on the station, we found something with their name on it and then photograph them in front of it. That was the idea for a promotion, right? Right. And mine was Alex moving in storage, and just big Alex on the <laughs> back of the truck. And it's a picture of me without my mustache. Uh, and I, I don't know, I look completely different. I don't know. I just, uh, just boy, was I ugly at that point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, we both have that esteem, so. Yeah. I, I well, saw one of the pictures. Uh, that was, I think, my favorite show of the year that used to do at the Fairmont. Yeah. Those are great. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, you, you when we, when we, before we went on here, you wished me a happy belated birthday, and I, yes. I thank you for that. Uh, but, you know, here's the problem with birthdays, and I... I uh, I mean, there are a lot of problems with birthdays, but one of them has been exacerbated by social media. And that is that if you're on Facebook and it's your birthday, everybody who follows you on Facebook gets a little thing that says it's Alex's birthday. Why don't you wish him a happy birthday? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I got like 250 birthday wishes yesterday from people I never heard of in my <laughs> life. It's highly annoying. And I really, folks, if you don't know the person, just because he's on Facebook and just because you friended him doesn't mean you you have to send him a birthday card. So if none of those people sent me a birthday card, I got about three good wishes for birthday. <laughs> My birthday. One from Penn Gillette. Shecky sent me one. He sent me an email. Uh, my wife. I said, I have no friends left. So well, you know. I sent you one that said it's over. So that was my birthday. Oh, I, did you? I was that in the Facebook stuff? Yeah. Uh huh. Because I probably didn't see it because I it, there were so many of them, you know, uh, that it obliterate. And then then there's those who send you a picture of a birthday cake. You know, now, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to. I don't want to put down anybody for their sentiment of wishing me a happy birthday, but. You didn't do it because you had it down in your calendar. <laughs> you know, you didn't do it because you were getting me a gift. You were doing it because Facebook told you to do it. Exactly. You know, so. Well, you were one of those uh, kids that got gypped because your birthday is so close to Christmas. Well, I didn't really get gypped. My parents, now we were Jewish, but they still celebrated Christmas. So I had my birthday. And I got all my little gifts on my birthday. And then Christmas, I got my gifts for my birthday. They felt that just because my birthday was so close to Christmas, I, you know, I really shouldn't, uh, um, I really shouldn't have, uh, 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 you know, uh, be suffering for that. So I didn't suffer for it. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty, you know, I, I got a lot of gifts. I got tons of stuff. You know, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not griping. I'm not griping. So, no. you know, um, but, you know, but it, it, it is when your birthday, when your birthday does, uh, you know, I, yesterday I looked up whose birthday it was on my birthday. I think I know one of them. Uh, tell me. 
Uh, I think Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, same birthday. Yeah. Steven. Yeah, you are a bunch better looking than you thought. St <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Ah, okay. Same birthday. Uh, I believe, no, Beethoven, I think, was two days before me, but I'm not sure. But there was some other famous composer, and I can't remember who. Um, but, uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, Jennifer Lopez's birthday was yesterday. That's what it said, wow. you know. So I, I looked up all these birthdays, and it, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, kind of kind of interesting. You know, my mother had the same birthday. Have you? Uh, does your mother have the same birthday as me? Yes, she did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So you know, but uh, December eighteenth rolls around, and I go. Here comes the Grim Reaper looking over my <laughs> wrinkled shoulder. You can't help. <laughs> wrinkled shoulder. You know, I mean, I just, I just think, you know, this is why I'm an atheist. Okay. If there was a God, he would have figured out a way to make this part of life better than any of the parts of the life you've already had. Right? Yeah. You know, because you've lived a long life and now you, you're getting this payoff. You know, you're heading towards death, but let everything be wonderful. No pains, no aches, nothing, you know. But no, everything starts falling apart. I'm expecting to walk down the hall here one day and my leg fall off. You know, <laughs> like Dana Carvey said, you can get injured just by taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I can, too, actually, to tell you the truth, because I have a torn meniscus. And if I sleep wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so, if I, you know, it, do you remember uh, who was? It? Oh, yeah. I remember. Do you remember somebody who died from almost died from sleeping? Eddie Money, remember that years ago, where he was like, oh, he, I, he yeah, he. I think he did severe damage to his leg too. It and he, because as he was sleeping, his leg was crossed or something. It cut off the circulation, and, and he, somehow he was high and passed out anyway. So he didn't wake yeah. up, and he almost died from lack of circulation or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, 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 how about uh, Jimi Hendrix? He died from sleeping. I mean, he died from being high and not waking up, you know. But he started vomiting and died and swallowed his own vomit and died from his vomit. That's a no, that's, Yeah, that can happen. Ugh. Mm, death by vomit. That's, that's, <laughs> uh, that's disgusting. No, yeah. but there was a woman in bed with him, and if she just turned him on his side, you know, Jimi Hendrix could be a has-been with the rest of us. Well, uh, where would... <laughs> I always wonder uh, how these people would have wound up where, had they lived. Where do, you, where do you think he would have gone? Well, I I don't know. You know, I mean, it really depends on, on oh, God, it's so many factors. You know, um, he was pretty big at the time. So I think he'd still be playing one-nighters somewhere. You know, he'd be playing concerts. He'd be out on the road a lot. Yeah. And uh, CBS Sunday Morning would do a profile on him, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, he was big enough that there was some kind of inertia there that would have would have propelled him at least into having being able to do gigs and have people show up. It's kind of like asking, what happened to Bob Dylan? You know, Bob Dylan's out there. I think he's on the road almost every day of the year. Doing yeah, that's the great thing. If you're a musician, I think you with any success, you can usually ride that forever. Yeah, there are always some people who will show up to your concert because yeah. they were a fan of Eddie Money. I mean, I don't. The, I saw a picture of Eddie Money the other day. He was doing something or singing somewhere or something, and I went, "Wow, is he still working?" You know, he had like what one hit, and that was it. I think he had two. I did, I did a private party with him in someone's backyard about ten years ago. And, some wealthy and, guy. And by the way, while we're talking, people are scratching their heads, saying, "Who the fuck was Eddie Money?" Uh, let's see, uh, two tickets to paradise. Yeah, yeah. And well, I think he had one more, but uh, he was, I think he was one of the first big uh, names on MTV. Really? He was one of the guys that got it in the ground floor, so he got a lot of exposure on that. Yeah. I was on MTV for the first, That's right. when, when it started out. It started out. 
81. I, I was, uh, it, uh, no, I wasn't 81. No, oh, 81 <laughs> was the year. Was that 81, really? That's when they started, yeah. Yeah, I got this call from an organization called Video West. Uh, and luckily, they were right across the street from the radio station. And uh, they uh, they called me. Or wait a minute. Wait, no, no, I wasn't. It, it wasn't across the street. I was. If it was eighty one, I would still have to be a KMEL, right? Yeah. Yeah. I get a call. And says we we want somebody who can uh, uh, come in and do an audition for us and be an announcer, maybe for this new thing that's happening. So I go over and they have me read the script. And uh, uh, it finishes off, uh, and uh, for MTV News, this is Alex Bennett, right? Now, I do the audition. I don't hear a thing about it. Not a word. So I've, it's like so many auditions I've gone out on, you know, you don't hear a word. Now, uh, I get a, uh, we get an invitation, I and my boss, uh, to go down to uh, the South Bay, where they're having a big unveiling of this new thing that's going to be on the cable system down there. It's not going to be in San Francisco. It's going to be on the cable system down there called MTV, Music Television. So we go down there, and they, they then say, okay, well now we're going to play the, you know, the demo tape here. And it's like all the VJs that are there, and they say, hi, we're, you know, introducing MTV, a new idea in the way of presenting music, blah, 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 music television, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and, and then they say, and let's take a look at what MTV will look like. And then they show all the various people introducing the music. And then they go, and now let's uh, go to Alex Bennett at MTV <laughs> News. And here comes this report with my voice in the background. And everybody in the room turns around simultaneously and stares at me. And they said, hey. oh, you're working for MTV? And I went, I guess I am now. <laughs> and I was on their demo tape. And so they then had me do these reports every week. And I was the Los Angeles reporter. Of course, I recorded them in San Francisco mm -hmm. um, uh, because they already had somebody who did San Francisco and they had somebody who did New York. And these were little news reports, you know. And then they decided to do away with that after a year. And at about a year, MTV came into San Francisco. And when I tell everybody that I was on MTV, they say, oh, sure you were. We didn't see you, you know. But I was on for a solid year on MTV God. when it first started, and I was on their demo tape. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Then they replaced me with Matt Lauer. So, <laughs> well, you couldn't figure out how to work the secret lock under your desk. <laughs> yeah. No, what happened was they did away with these reports from these various cities, and then they started just doing MTV News hosted, and most people forget this, by Matt Lauer. So that's where he got oh, his start. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Holy crap, Jesus. So, you know. Well, I, I remember, uh, God, that's when I was, in, I was like 83, I was into comedy, and I just remember people in bars were just transfixed by those videos on MTV. Just well, sit it, there and watch for hours. I think everybody thought it was going to not work, and it worked. I mean, it really yeah. worked. Um, and what it did is, in the beginning, they didn't they didn't have enough a lot of videos. To be very honest with you, in fact, do you know what the first song was they played on MTV? I think it was "Video Killed the, the Radio the, Star." Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Because they had a video on it. They had a video. Uh, they took anything they had a video on. And sometimes they were musicians and music that wasn't very popular. And because they had to rely on these things and play them over and over again, they became hits. Uh, and yeah. people then said, hey, maybe this is a way to promote our music. So they would all then start doing music videos. And finally, they, you know, they would have to sit there and say, we want that one, but we don't want that one. But in the beginning, they'd take anything that breathed. Yeah, and some of them were so incredibly bad. Not I good. Was, I think there was one with Pat Benatar that was considered one of the worst of all time. Really? Yeah. I forget the song, but yeah, it was yeah. hideous. But then, then, you know, and they became a huge success. And then they did what? They don't play music anymore. They, yeah, I don't even hear about MTV they anymore. They just have girls getting pregnant, you know, and things <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. 
Shit, they even got into, uh, they did a couple of years of comedy, too. Did they the really? MTV Half Hour Comedy Hour. I, uh, no, well, we have, there was HBO Half Hour Comedy Hour. I mean, yeah, well, MTV did it, too. I did one in 91 and 93. Do you know, of all the things I've ever done, the thing that keeps paying me residuals? Remember I did like, they brought uh, HBO's One Night Stand, the first one they ever did, the first eight of them they ever did, or 12 of them, I can't remember how many there were, they did out of the Fillmore in San Francisco. So they hired me to come in and do the warm-up. So I did the warm-up, and then I would introduce the, you know, I would introduce the act. And they then said, well, you know, we like your voice, why don't you, we'll fly you down to L.A., for a day, and you'll go into a studio, and you'll just record the, and ladies and gentlemen, here's Bill Maher, you know, things like that. So I went down and did that. Uh, and over the years, I keep getting residual checks, both, mostly from the one with Bill Maher. That's great, really? Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but I, if you look back at how much money I've made off of One Night Stands, many thousands of dollars. Just in, in, you know, they're a little like $25 checks and $100 checks. And, you know, after so many years, it has piled up. Thank you, Bill Maher and everybody yeah. else, you know. And I uh, I can go on, if I, if, you, if people want to hear my voice, go to the first Bill Maher on uh, HBO uh, Go, and you'll hear my voice introducing Bill Maher. But all the rest, uh, they aren't running. Although there were some people, there was Joy Behar, uh, was one of the people I introduced. Uh, uh, David Tell. David Tell, was he on the first batch? He was on, I think, the second one. Oh, I, no, I, I didn't remember do, it was at the Fillmore because I came by. I didn't do the second one. When I The second one I didn't do the announcing on, but the second one I still did the warm-up on. Oh, yeah, because no. you were there. I remember that. Oh, no, or I had something to do with promoting it. And warm you were there, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Uh, the first year, uh, you know, uh, I, I this is a story I love to tell. I I, I hate Bill Maher, but then again, who doesn't? Who <laughs> that and that goes back to many many years. Yeah, I'm and, and sure. you, you'd have to you'd have to agree he's not one of the most well liked comedians. Never met him, but I've heard he's not a pleasant person. Yeah. So I uh, I uh, um, um, went there and. Um, I was doing the, you know, the warm up, and in the warm up, it, what you do in a warm up when you're warming up a, a show like that, what you're doing is you're teaching everybody how to laugh and applaud and do stuff like that, right? So I would do some stuff, and I would say, "How many here like?" And I can't remember who the president was at the time. Who was in 1980? Do you remember? Or, or 80? Uh, when I do when I do this, 83, 84. Well, it was 90. Uh. What what year did we do the one night stands? Do you remember? Uh, you're you're good at this. Ninety six. Were that far in? Y yeah, oh. mm -hmm. that was, was Clinton. Oh really? Okay. So how many like Clinton? Yay! How many like? And I named some bad politician. Boo! You know. And then I we were doing this so they could get applause and laughter and things like that that they could like use if they had to. All right. So now I get called to Bill Maher's dressing room. And I walk in and he says, uh, you Alex? I said, yeah. He says, um, uh, do you do, uh, you're doing the warm up, right? I said, yeah. He says, do you do any political stuff? I said, well, I do a few little political things to kind of get people to applaud or to boo or whatever. And he said, don't do it. I do political. <laughs> I said, what? He said, don't do it. I said, I, I, it's part of the warm up. He said, don't do it. I, 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 I do. I do political. And I said, well, listen, you're getting paid $20,000 to do this. I'm getting paid 300 bucks a night. Follow me, motherfucker. And I walked out. <laughs> That's great. And I amped up the politics just to piss him off, you know. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But and there was somebody there. I can't remember who it was. Uh, you want to talk about these days of, you know, sexual harassment and whatever. I can't remember who it was, but 
uh, Laurie was in the dressing room, and he, she'd been called in by some guy, and I, I can't remember who he was. It was like an agent or a manager, and he attacked her. Wow. And she just, you know, you know, you remember Lori. She just yeah. kind of like kicked him in the balls or something and said, fuck you, don't do that, and left. This, no, she said, I know what she said. This is unacceptable. And I can't remember who the guy was, but I won't, uh, even if I knew, I wouldn't mention it, you know. So that that was a good case of sexual harassment. That one I remember. Uh, but I can't <laughs> remember who, how to handle it. <laughs> I can't remember who the guy was. He was one of the agents for one of the acts. Okay. And oh. and and uh, I can't remember the guy who was my was the dire- the producer. Uh, uh, he used to work for Sullivan, and then he started producing these shows. And I got to know him pretty. Dominic. I'm trying is, to. Th- is an Italian name. Yeah. Yeah. It was like Celebrisi. Yes, Cele- yes, yes, Celebrisi. And I, uh, we're we're sitting there watching the show as it's going on. He's a producer, and we got to like each other and know each other. Joy Behar is on, Ugh. and I said, "Where did you get her?" <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Well, you know how things go." I said, "Yeah, this is the young agent special," and he said, "You got it." <laughs> He said, I couldn't get so-and-so unless I took Behar. Yeah, so. Uh, fun with comedy, Bubs. Just fun with comedy. So what are you doing for this Christmas season? Uh, Christmas, i really not a big fan of, but uh, I am working with Dave Attell on New Year's out here, so that'll be fun. Oh, too bad, because I was going to invite you to my place for okay. New Year's. <laughs> i got to get back there and see you. Yeah, yeah, Dave, uh, if, when you, if you get on a plane, but the only travel you do is wagon train. I can do a short flight. Uh, Rob Schneider wanted to take me to this tour on australia oh, yeah, you tell me i'd love to go to but it's a 17 hour flight and i would be uh, out of my mind I, you know, I i don't understand that why would you be crazy 17 hours what could you do you could sleep for eight hours get up and you still have another nine to go yeah we're running out of time here but i want to keep talking for a little bit yeah. fuck fuck the uh, citizens panel you uh, always yeah. do that. That was great about your radio show. You all, remember we always went over. We always went over. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, unless I was feeling tired, and then I just said, yeah. But I mean, the show was on a roll. You keep it going. That was uh, awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. Also because that asshole Roland West went on after me, <laughs> and uh, there are all stories about what he how he screwed me over. Uh, he. Um, um, he would, he would always get very pissed because he's sitting there waiting to start his show and I'm still rambling on. <laughs> We've got 40 people in there. <laughs> well, how do you feel about this time of the year? Would you like to give a little Christmas wish to our, our audience out there? Yes, uh, don't kill yourself. It'll be over soon. Yeah, well, you're my father used to say. And you can take this quote to the bank. Yeah, it's the one quote that he had that I remember all my life, my father said. Every year, at this time of year, he would look at me and go, well, I guess Christmas is at our throats again. <laughs> our throats. Anyway, I want to wish you a happy, uh, happy uh, whatever it is. Happy Qua- Hanukkah, it, Christmas, Kwanzaa, whatever they call it these days. Yeah, you and, celebrate uh, Kwanzaa, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> well, it was. Uh, we have a guy, uh, um, uh, Jack Bishop, on our station here, who uh, who said that he doesn't celebrate Kwanzaa because he will never celebrate a, a, a holiday that's younger than he is. Because you know? <laughs> it's a completely ma- it's a completely made up holiday. It's not, you know. That's true. Yeah, and and. I I don't know how many black people do you know who actually say I'm celebrating Kwanzaa. Yeah, you don't hear much about it, but it is out there. So I guess a few do. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing is that it's been Passover, and people to be nice always wish me a happy Passover, and I go thank you very much. And then I go, how do you feel about the fact that on Christmas you only have one gift? But we, on Passover, get eight gifts. One every day. 
course, people don't tell you that sometimes it's an apple and sometimes it's an orange. You know, and it's <laughs> some kind of cheap Jew gift. Anyway, <laughs> I love talking to you, man. You bring out the best in me. I keep hope alive for both of us. And I, I've, you've been on, I don't know how long we've been doing this, every couple of weeks, you know. A few months now, yeah. Well, long, longer than that, I think. You know, we've been doing this about a half a year, maybe at least. And I will. Com we will keep doing it after the new year. As We're, long as they accept us, I'll be here. Where's its ugly head? Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy, the personage of Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. And here we go. Okay, I pushed the right button. I haven't been pushing buttons very well tonight. Oh, hold on a second. I want to turn. Do, see, I didn't do one other thing. Just wait over there. I'll be back. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll be back. Here I am. Hey, 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 hey. Hi. How are you? What's that? Okay. How you doing? Okay. Oh, man. It's been one technical problem after another. I, uh, tonight, uh, my biggest problem tonight was every year I get these, uh, these things called the uh, screeners from, the, uh, from SAG, from Screen Actors Guild, SAG after, uh, which I'm not a, an actor, but I, I play one on radio. No, uh, I'm actually one, uh, I, I belong to SAG AFTRA, and AFTRA is my mother union for broadcasters, and so uh, we, had a, we had a pretty good, uh, good uh, uh, we so every year we get these uh, uh, what do you call it these screeners, and I'm doing a few things here while I'm talking to you, um, and uh, uh, we get screeners and we get screeners for all the great movies. I mean we got uh, let's see here Shape of Water and that thing with billboards in Minnesota and the James Franco film and the Churchill film and downsizing and. Uh, just a whole bunch of them. They're available. The only thing is, I try to watch them. I want to watch them using my Apple TV because I don't want to sit here and watch them on the computer. And I tried to get onto the Apple TV, and it says, oh, you're connected now, and your Apple TV is ready to go, and my Apple TV ain't doing the diddly shit. So it uh, just sits, sits there with the codes I'm supposed to put in. So I, you know, I, what happens when there are technical problems like this, you always blame yourself. And the problem is it's probably them. All right. And then, then it says in one place, uh, Hey, uh, sign in here and uh, give us your, uh, your email address and your, your, your password. And, and so I give my email address and password, the one that I use at, uh, at AFTRA and it says uh, not on file. So then I put in every other email that I have. And it says, not on file. Well, I'm sorry. One of those has to be on file. You know, I can't go back to my original one years ago, hook.net. No, I, I know it's a certain finite amount, but I'm using every one that I have. And it still comes back and says, not on file. So is it me? I don't think so. I think it has something to do with them. But by the time you figured out that it's probably not you, it's them, You've already gone half nuts trying to solve the problem. So anyway, I uh, uh, so I've had that problem. Then yesterday, I get a call from GoDaddy. GoDaddy are the people who um, serve my website, and you know we store all the shows on there, and they go out uh, all over the world, and so on. And I uh, I use them also for my email. I spend a good deal of money with them every year. Not not a huge amount, but enough. You know. Um, so I get a call yesterday, it says spam, but it says GoDaddy. So I figure I better answer it because it might be a, some technical problem or a check bounced or something, you know. And it's a guy and he says, oh, how's the service going? And I know what it's going to be. He's going to try and sell me something. And I say, it's going just fine. And what do you want to sell me? And he says, well, do you, have an, you don't have an SSL certificate. And I said, what's that? And I said, that's a security certificate that once you have that, you have a secure site. And after the first of the year, Chrome, at least Google, is going to start putting a major warning anytime anybody goes to your site saying, hey, it's not an, it's not, it hasn't been approved and whatever. 
so would you like an SSL certificate? And I said, well, I guess. He said, how much? He says, $179 for three years. And I figure I have to start doing the math. It's about five bucks a month. I'm going, well, you know, it wouldn't be bad. Because, you know, when you go to your, uh, when you go to your email, you um, uh, have a, um, a thing that says, uh, uh, not email, but when you go to a website, up in the browser, up, up at the right-hand side, it's like this green thing with a lock on it, and it says secure. That's what an SSL certificate does for you. So I go, good. He said, now the problem is a few things may not work with it, but you can work around those and so on. And I go, okay. So uh, I tell him, go ahead and do it. This means now I will be HTTPS dot colon forward slash forward slash gabnet dot net instead of just HTTP. And I have to put something on my site so anybody who doesn't type in HTTPS will still be able to go to HTTP. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. So the first thing I find when uh, I can, I, the rest of you don't go to the HTTPS site yet, okay? That takes a couple of days for it to be registered and all of that. But if I just, if you just type it in, you go directly to it, okay? So if you went HTTPS, Forward, colon forward slash forward slash gabnet.net you'll see it it has a you know secure thing and everything on it but what happened was my live uh, live feed disappeared <laughs> it just went away apparently there was something that the uh, certificate didn't like uh, so I um I uh, then am hustling around trying to figure out what the problem is. So I, I get another player, and it works. But, it, but because I have it on, the thing isn't listing me as being secure. In other words, the green isn't up there with the lock and everything. And I'm going, fuck. Oh, boy. You know what? I just paid $179 for something that I'm not going to be able to use. And I figured out what the problem was. The people who are serving this program to you, the, 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 the stream, is not secure. All right? And uh, so, of course, the certificate sees that and then goes, well, in this particular case, this isn't a secure site. So I, uh, I then try to figure out a workaround on this deal. And I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out a workaround on this deal. Uh, and so I think I, then I think I found the answer, okay? And the answer was our tune-in thing, our tune-in uh, signal. So I uh, go to TuneIn and see if they've got like what they call an embedded uh, app that I can put on the page. And sure enough, they do. And I install it. And it, it, it refers to them as HTTPS. So I know they're secure. So I now put that up there. So now what you've got on there is a, a TuneIn um, player. All right. The only trouble is if you turn it on, the security lock goes off. <laughs> it disappears. The it, you know you can still watch it and all of that, but it it, it the site is now not secure. Well, why isn't it? I mean, isn't TuneIn secure? No, because they're getting the signal from the people that I do business with to do the streaming. So now I'm hunting around looking for a streaming outfit that has a certificate for their signal they send you and I can't find one there just doesn't seem to be one so I've got to live with this as it is but when you first go there it's secure the minute you start playing that it isn't secure anymore uh, and it won't become secure again until you reboot the page and don't touch the tune-in thing the good thing about there two there's a bad thing number one when you go to the page you no longer hear the audio start up but once you click on tune in on that page, you could listen to us all day and I think never have to um, reboot your, your page or refresh your page. Uh, the worst that might happen is when we go between programs, it might pause. But basically, uh, the signal keeps going on tune in. So uh, you, you don't have it when, when you're through listening to me and then he comes on, uh, um, Jack. 
and, or she, Amy, uh, uh, then it'll be okay. All right. Does any of this make sense? Am I just rambling on and on and on? So I had that technical problem yesterday. So that didn't let me get to bed till five o'clock in the morning because I was, I can't go to bed till I solve something. I never should do anything after one o'clock that will even start a problem because then I'm up. And then, then when I lie in bed trying to go to sleep, see, I mean, I, I got into bed around three, but then I laid there. And I laid there, and I laid there, and this thing kept going around and around in my head, and how am I going to solve this problem? Because I'm a crazy asshole. And um, that's what, the, this, anyway, you don't want to hear about this. You don't want to hear about my problems. Uh, it's, it's too much to deal with. Uh, and, uh, you know, whatever. So yesterday was my birthday, and we, uh, we decided to... Um, my girlfriend always takes me out for my birthday for dinner. And we go to a wonderful place called the Gotham Bar and Grill. It's kind of a tradition. My birthday has always been at the Gotham Bar and Grill. Uh, it shouldn't be, but it is. And uh, we, uh, uh, the food's good there. You know, it's a little overpriced. I think it's overpriced for, the, for what the food is. But what the hell, you know, you only, you only live once, right? or twice or three times or whatever let me let me just adjust my camera just ever so slightly there we go uh so anyway so um uh we had dinner and a very nice dinner and uh i enjoyed the dinner and it was my birthday dinner and of course at the end they bring you a little piece of uh, uh, ice cream with a with a candle in it and I blow it out happy birthday Alex and then she eats the ice cream because I'm on the low carb diet right so anyway I can't I can't even have my own birthday cake so anyway that's 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 what happened there but here's the thing and I, I mentioned this to to Bubs and it was early on in the in the interview with Bubs and so probably most of you didn't hear it you know I want to thank all of you who sent me happy wishes on my birthday I may not have seen yours, however, and the reason why I may not have seen yours is because I got so many of them that I somehow I couldn't see one that I might. Bub said he sent me one. I, I didn't even see it because there are just so many of them. Uh, and uh, you say, Alex, gee, you're, you're really popular, Alex. You know, you're really pop. No, I don't know any of these fucking people, Okay. Um, the people who really cared about me sent me an email. <laughs> yes. And if you wanted to send me an email, you could do it just by going to gabnet.net and hitting that contact thing, and then that goes to me, okay? But Penn Jillette sent me an email, and uh, Shecky sent me an email, and uh, people I, I, I know and adore, or they call me. Uh, you know, my, my j business manager calls me every year on my birthday, singing me happy birthday to you. He and his wife, but she wasn't there yes, uh, yesterday. So, But anyway, I know it's him, and it was a happy birthday for me, and I was, uh, I was really happy with it. But I, you get all these happy birthdays, and it's because Facebook forces people to wish you a happy birthday. You know? And, and uh, so you don't feel as good about that as if, and you know which ones are those because they're all part of a thread. I don't know. Facebook does it so they're a thread. But I'm sure they send things. It's Alex Bennett's birthday. You want to send him a little birthday wish? Oh, here, send him a birthday cake. Send him a this. Send him a that. Well, I mean, thank you for going to the trouble of clicking. Okay? It's nice that you did it. Not everybody did. Probably goes out to my followers, which are about 2,000 or something like that. And... Um, so, uh, so thank you anyway, uh, in spite of the fact that it means absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, I almost started like erasing them so that I wouldn't, the whole page wouldn't be cluttered with them. And I, uh, I didn't do that because I didn't want to, that would be an insult to the people who just clicked, you know, but they will be gone by tomorrow because I'll get rid of that, that thread. It's, it's crummying up the page. And uh, God knows, uh, you know, I needed to promote my show and to 
do the videos and so on with the show. Now, excuse a few of the technical glitches at the beginning of the show tonight. I had the wrong slides up. I had the wrong video up. And then, I, then this, when the sound started, I've been having a problem uh, with, uh, rec- with the files that uh, seem to be made by Adobe Audition. They get a hiss in them. But if I change the rate, so then I stopped the show and made that. It was pretty quick for me to do. And I, I hope uh, uh, otherwise I, would, I couldn't listen to that hiss for an entire half hour. So I appreciate it if you stuck by me during all of that. And apparently you did. Okay, well, anyway, uh, I hate the world and I'm a year older. Fuck it. That, that, that sucks. You know, that really sucks. Um, getting old ain't for sissies is what uh, uh, Betty Davis used to say. And I quite agree with that sentiment. Uh, and anyway, so our, uh, I just opened up the lines if anybody wants to call me, um, you know, um, did anybody on the citizens panel wish me a happy birthday? No, no, they didn't. I think women who did, uh, Mark Thorner did see, I may have missed some of them. Um, uh, Mark Thorner did. Yeah, that was about it. That was about, it. I didn't even get a birthday uh, wish from, from Phil, you know, so I don't know that I care really. I guess what I care about, I, I, I don't care, I do, uh, don't give a shit about all the people who wished me a happy birthday, but I'm bothered by the people who didn't. So that <laughs> to shows you where I'm coming from. Anyway, the lines are open, folks, and I'm here to talk, and I, I figured you'd be ready for me now because I've been no talking for 20 minutes now. Here comes, uh, here comes Phil. Uh, yeah, here he comes. There he goes. There he is. Uh, Phil, happy birthday. I was one of the first ones to do you, it at did like you, did five you, in the morning. Did you really? Where Where did you do it? Uh, Facebook. Uh, on the page itself? or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I went to your... Uh, uh, went to your page and, and wrote a post. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. So, All right. You know. I mean, what else is new? Are they, well, there's just so many of them, you know. It, you get lost in it, and so many of them with people, I go, who's that? I, don't, I never heard of them. I never heard of them. I never heard of them. But then like, again, and then I was again, like the second or third person to post. And then again, pay, but then, and then every now and then somebody will say, well, I used to listen to you when I was growing up, which makes me feel real good. Uh, yeah. I used to listen to you when I was growing up, and uh, I loved you on WBAI. <laughs> now, I never was on WBAI, but I get that all the time. People think because I had kind of, hello there, Scott, Be- because I had such, because I was kind of like a hip guy, uh, um, you know, with the long hair and all of that. They figured. That kind of show belonged on WBAI, so I must have been on WBAI, but it was never on no, WBAI. Mistake you for what, Bob Fossey or something? Bob, Bob Fass. Yeah. Well, you see, I always considered if I ever went to that kind of program, that kind of station, I'd be ta- I'd be taking it easy. You know, I wouldn't be fighting the good fight, but I did it. I did my kind of thing on uh, on AM radio stations, you know, there were rock stations where when I had a message, it would get across to the very group that was affected by it. And yet everybody, well, why don't you go over to WBAI? Well, because that's like summer camp, you know? Well, I, I was a greasy volunteer at WBAI in 1969. But, I, but I always felt that it was a public radio station, ladies and gentlemen, not public, not PBS, not that. Sure. Yeah. It, it was owned by Pacifica, it was, and it was like, you know, a real lefty station and all of that and you know but but I often felt that going there would have been giving up you know because I was in the trenches I was fighting World War three right and they were and, and they were off at summer camp yeah you don't think that they felt that they were in the trenches no they weren't and, in the uh, trenches you know, no, were no because they were around people that all stable. that all agreed with them I had to sit there and I had to fight the good fight against uh, the suits you know yeah. And and get the same message across, but to a larger audience, and to a to a mainstream audience. Yeah. And uh, so um, I always felt I was fighting the good fight, and you know, people would say, "Why do you go to WBAI?" And I go, "Too easy, just too easy." Yeah. Plus, there was enough money over there, but you know, I have to say Cigarettes that cigarettes were free. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there, there was uh, they used to you know hand out cigarettes. 
Uh, oh, really? Like what's going out of stock? Oh, they really did. Were doing people a big favor, weren't they? <laughs> 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 you know. Well, they may, maybe they knew I was going to turn into a conservative. Yeah, if you don't get shot by a right winger, you get killed by our cigarettes. They really yeah. passed out free cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you remember the days when they used to pass out free cigarettes? They would have these little yes. like like four packs, and, and yeah. the Winston people would run around, you know, or the Salem people and pass them out. He did that on Union Square when I was living in San Francisco, so it had to be in the early seventies. Yeah, and I, you know, I go, get, I get myself like, hey, give me ten of those, you know, <laughs> I go home and I <laughs> wouldn't have to buy cigarettes for a week, well, for yeah. a day, well, for a couple of hours. Uh, <laughs> so I, 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 you, you smoked, didn't you, Phil? At one point. Uh yeah. Yeah. How uh, many packs a day? Uh, one or less. Uh, you know, I, I hated the smell of cigarettes, but when I was going to college in New York, yeah. everybody smoked in the classroom Yeah, and, uh, they, they, they were smoking cigars and pipes and, and cigarettes and the whole classroom, like it was like a ball of smoke. And if you didn't smoke, you died uh, <laughs> or you died anyway. But, yeah. Well, you so, know, I mean, but uh, you know, that was a time when we didn't know the real dangers of cigarette smoking. I often say, you know, they say, oh, the horrible, terrible cigarette companies, you know, and uh, how, why they were selling this poison for years. And, well, I think for years and years, they didn't know. It, it wasn't until like the 50s that okay. heavy smoking came into, you started to seeing the evils of it. You didn't, prior to that, you didn't see people dying of it was 65 of they uh, discovered and uh, they put yeah. a warning. Yeah. On, so, on you know, all that denial wasn't really denial by the, by the tobacco companies. In the beginning, it was that the tobacco companies didn't think this really was bad for you. Hell, I remember the ads on TV. Uh, you know, uh, what was it? that uh, Marlboro, Salem, you know. Cool, cool the, cigarettes. The, the lady cigarettes. Uh, they, they had little skinny Virgin, ones for ladies. Virginia Slims. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool cigarettes with the little penguins marching up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Cools. They were, they were cool. That's why they were called cools. Uh, but it didn't taste good like a cigarette should. Yeah, I'm looking I here. I, I Chesterfields have... and Lucky Strikes. I had a bunch of cigarette commercials here, but I, I can't find them right now. But, yeah. uh, no, they, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what, I, uh, what was the first brand you ever smoked? And, and why did you start smoking? Uh, Lucky Strikes. And uh, I was a carpet installation helper, and that's what the mechanic would smoke. And, of course, I was maybe 16, and that's what uh, that's what he gives you. I'll tell you who who gave me my first cigarette. Yeah, my ex wife Ronnie. Not when we were married. When we were going with each other, and she said, uh, "Here, try it." So I tried it, and she was smoking. Are you ready for this? Newports. Wow. So Dude. you're. You'll be a jet from your first cigarette to your last, last dying, dying day. Picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, uh, uh, I let me let me get myself out of the picture here a little bit because we have the lovely face of of uh, of uh, Patrick there, and I want everybody to see him. Hi, Patrick. Uh, no, she she um, uh, she smoked Newports, so I went out and bought a pack of Newports because I wanted to, you know. Of course, she was a, a woman, and I wanted to impress her. Plus, you know, you got to admit, at least for a time, smoking looked cool. Yeah. Did you <laughs> cough? Huh? Did you cough? When I first started smoking? Oh, yeah. You had to know from that first cough of smoking a cigarette that it was bad for you, but no. <laughs> you just kept smoking. So anyway, then I, I really went all the way. I got a Newport lighter. Remember they were aqua blue Newports? Well, the lighter was aqua blue. with the, It almost had like a Nike swoosh on it. You know, and uh, I was I had the whole the whole kit now, and then I and then I went on to one thing or another thing. I, d I went through a Marlboro phase, and finally, when I got to New York, I smoked Sherman cigarettes. Oh, the uh, Nate Sherman. Those were the, uh, the brown cigarettellos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they had no additives in them. They didn't have saltpeter. They didn't have all the chemicals in them. So I think in some ways they were a safer cigarette. Well, without the saltpeter, you want sex all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were they were suppressing a, a group. You know, I think Shermans were also popular amongst uh, the black yeah. uh, community uh, because they used to lace yeah. them with PCP and call them Sherms. Yeah, I I I, I bet. Uh, and tell me, I'm I'm a psychic here, 
that uh, uh, Mike smoked and, in fact, still is. Yeah, he does. Mike? Did you hear yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard you. Are you still a smoker? Yeah. Why? Didn't you get the memo? What memo? And I don't care about the memo. Oh, you don't care. You don't think it's going to kill you. I, I know it's going to. So what? I quit drinking. You know, I couldn't drink anymore for a diabetic. What, what the heck am I supposed to do? Well, live a clean, wholesome life. Take a walk. Smell. I do. I, I do take a walk. Oh, okay. I get tired of automobiles. Take they're stinking out. They're stinking exhaust too. Yeah. Hey, hey Mike. You know, take, don't uh, don't even get me started on that crap. Hey Mike, do you walk to the store to get cigarettes? <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah. It's an uphill climb. It's kind of going to go up the hill. Yeah. yeah. That's a good, it's a good climb going up. That's steep. Okay, well, anyway, so you, you, you never smoked, did you, Patrick? Yeah, he doesn't, Patrick doesn't look like he smoked. Pa Patrick is far too practical to have been a smoker. His skin is too smooth, you know? Uh, he doesn't have uh, that pasty yellow look that we all got <laughs> from smoking. Or on the ends of your fingers. Oh, I think if I didn't quit smoking back when I was, I think I was 42 maybe at the time when I quit, uh, I think I'd be dead by now. You know, I mean, you know, did you ever smoke, Scott? No. No. Okay. Never smoking. How about you, Kevin? Yep. Yep. Old gold filters. Oh, really? Because you like the ones on TV with the legs, right? No, because nobody liked them in a, at school, and I used them, and nobody wanted to borrow them. <laughs> well, you know, we could start naming cigarettes that no longer exist. Do you remember <clears throat> Cavaliers? No. Well, my dad used to send me down to the store with a note on my bicycle, down to the liquor store to get a two packs of Larks. Larks? Oh, man. And Larks. The charcoal filter. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, then you had, uh, well, you had, you know, as you say, I'm thinking of the brands that no longer exist. Old Golds I don't think exist anymore. I don't know. I haven't looked lately. Yeah, I don't I know I think either. they still make camels, don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think so. Cigarettes, I think what they've gone to is these generic ones. I, that's, I, when I see people smoking, they're, they're smoking some sort of white pack generic. Yeah, they're called basics or something. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I, I don't know why. I, I mean, you know, when I did smoke, there was a difference in taste between cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, the Lucky Strike had that toasted tobacco, and it did taste different. Yeah, it was toasted. I, yeah. Well, uh, uh, what I really loved, oh, here comes Bree. Here we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just bring him into the fold here. Hello. Hello. And hold on a second. Wait till his picture comes around here. Lights, lights up, and we see him. Do we? Bree, are you there? No, he's not there yet. Got a problem, I think. Anyway, uh, there we go. Hi, Bree. Bree? Hello. Hi, Alex. Okay. Same thing. I always have to call in, then it kicks me off, and then I can join the ongoing call. I don't know why. Well, but anyway. that's the gods of Skype. I, I hate computers today. Yeah. So don't even don't even start me. Anyway, uh, uh, we're, we're talking about... Anti-smoker... You're an anti-smoker. You never smoke. Oh, ab absolutely. I believe they should just all be, you know, uh, exported oh, to, like, I don't know, we, we find some remote island somewhere, and we just move all the smokers there. They can smoke all day, every day, to their heart's content. I, I'm not. But not around. Yeah. As an ex-smoker, as liquor. As an ex -smoker, I feel the same way. Uh, you know, uh, most people who are ex-something, uh, go all the way over to the other side, like Bree. I would like to see them round it up, uh, get a fire hose out, and yeah, just get them up the Bree, the wall. But Bree never smoked, did you, Bree? Um, I did. Oh, you did. did? Oh, so I, you're you're one of those. You oh, well, then don't 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 get that way. Build a wall around them. No, I yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I you know I don't believe I. Uh, I'm not about ready no. to tell people. You know, oh, you smoke? Oh, that's terrible. I mean, I will try and save their life by telling them of the dangers and how n easy it was for me to quit, that it isn't as rough as you no. think it is. But it seems when you're, when you're a smoker, it seems like there's this huge wall and you can't 
traverse it. And really, the fact is, it's not that difficult. It's pretty damn easy. At least I found it easy. Yeah, when I sold- I was not a regular smoker. Yeah. I just did it to be cool, and I would just puff. Yeah, well, yeah. You, well you, know, you know something, though? Here's what I did. This is the key to quitting. Uh, don't say you're going to quit. Say you're going to see how long you can go without smoking. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, because uh, then you don't then you don't set yourself up to fail. You're actually playing a game with yourself, you know. And uh, um, you know, I quit once, and then I was smoking six weeks later. I quit the second time, and I haven't smoked since. And quite frankly, I don't even remember how what it was like to be a smoker, you know. I I put the next cigarette off for another hour. Yeah, uh, I made up a bunch of rules. And uh, I didn't smoke before 12. I didn't smoke after 6. I didn't smoke in my own home. I didn't smoke in my car. Uh, I didn't smoke when I ate. And so I, but uh, so noon would come around, and I'd say, oh, I can have a cigarette, but maybe I'll wait till 1 o'clock. And so I've been waiting 40 years now. <laughs> I think, I, think I, I, I said I'm going to see how long I can go without smoking, and I went about a day, and then a day in, I said, I think I'll take a puff, and I took a puff. And that was the last cigarette I ever took a puff out of. I'll tell you a funny story, though. My friend Steve Gruberg and I, he quit two years later. And we were in Vegas. And uh, my wife, or my wife, was my wife? No, who was I with? Who I can't remember who I was with. Might have been, might have, no, it wasn't Marjorie because she's never gone to Vegas with me. Who S went to Susan. We, Somebody was in Vegas with me. Anyway. Or maybe I just went there and I was there by myself. I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, so he, well, I guess, yeah, whoever I was with and his wife, Adrian, decided they wanted to go get some coffee or something. And we said, we'll wait out here for you. And then Steve said, I got an idea. And he runs into the store we're standing next to and buys a pack of cigarettes. And he says, here, when they come back, let's light up. You know, we don't have to inhale, but just light up, you know. And so... The, here they come. Okay, so we both light up, and we both got these cigarettes in our mouth, and they came over. And they, There was a look on their face they couldn't believe. And then suddenly they realized it was a joke because we weren't inhaling it. And, and it was funny because that was the first time I had a cigarette in my mouth since I had quit, which was maybe 15, 20 years earlier. And I felt uncomfortable doing it, even though it was for a joke. You know, so... But that, that's my hit my story with smoking. Not, not now, how, many, how many of you guys smoke cigars? Uh, uh, Occasionally. I mean, five, six a year. Everybody who, now, everybody who smokes a cigar should be forced to live on another island so I don't have to smell but that god-awful shit. cigars is the ultimate put-off to people. You know, if you really if you really want to be antisocial, yeah, you smoke a nah, cigar. I'll tell you what it is. It's your deep, or you smoke it's with your, other people that are smoking it, cigars. It's your deep seated desire to suck dick. <laughs> well No uh, it isn't. Depends on the on the cigar itself. If yeah. it's a good a good cigar, the smell won't be that bad. If it's a cheap cigar, uh, oh yeah. Now, the smell is bad with all of them for people that don't smoke cigars. But if you appreciate cigars, you don't mind the smell. Do you ever remember uh, a cigar that was a crooked cigar? Yes. It crooks? was called Crooks. It was called Crooks. And they were, like, wavy? Yeah. Old Italian people smoked them. Yeah. No, uh, um, there was an Italian cigar. It looked like a little hard turd. You know what I'm talking about? They all uh, look Bill? like little hard turds. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's um, a cigar. I and say they are cigars that are made in Italy, and those cigars are real. Uh, those things are nasty. Yeah, I, they're they're not to knock you over your. We ass. had some cheap American cigars. Remember Roy Tans? Yeah, five yeah. cents a piece. Five cents a piece. Get yeah, them in a machine. Do they still make them? I don't think. I don't know. Uh, I the think they do. I go to doesn't sell those. <laughs> I don't think they. I don't think it's such a thing as a cheap cigar anymore because it's become such an kind of elite kind of thing. You know, you go to a cigar bar. That's the two well, things I hate: cigars and drinking. So, well, I go know. to cigar. There's a cigar bar about a block from my house uh, where you go in. It's like a house. You go in. They've got humidor's all over the place, and you you get you pick your cigar. 
and then you sit down in an overstuffed chair, and they got TVs going, yeah. and uh, you know you have you have your cigar. Yeah. So because Faye hates the smell of it, occasionally I stop there, uh, but it's you know yeah. they don't have really great cigars, but their cigars all cost twenty bucks. I'll, t- I'll tell you what really bothers me. I'm and, and, and I have never been a drinker. Okay, and. Don't ask me why. I have no reason why. I mean, my father was a drinker. He was a musician, and musicians drank because they were the environment they were in were bars and saloons and, you know, uh, places like that. And then some guy would say, drink, buy, drink. Buy, oh. the, buy the band a drink, you know, and then they'd all get drunk. And, you know, so, I mean, he would come home from, a, from most jobs kind of looped. But he could really hold his liquor. He could... He could um, um, drink anybody under the table and as a fact one time at a certain time he found out that he was getting drunk too easily and he said i can't hold it anymore and he just stopped drinking altogether but mm. the point is that's why i don't think he was ever an alcoholic but the point is that i had uh, for some reason always found drinkers disgusting and that includes my wife i mean i who who's calling us by the way who is this by the way who just called? Commencement of the game, Punch Buggy. Oh, Punch Buggy, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second, Schmoody. Uh, that's my ex-girlfriend, uh, Kathleen. Uh, uh, so, no, hey, so, it was January. It was January of '98 that you and really Steve not. pulled that stupid trick. You, you, with the you were smoking. the you were the one who was there. Yes. Yes. So you were. You remember? You came back. The two of you came back. And we were standing there yes. casually smoking. And we probably had the what the fuck look on our face. Oh, you definitely had the what the fuck look on your face. <laughs> because you had never seen me smoke. You know, you're, no. you, you came into my life too late for my puffing days, you know. Oh, my God. We couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, I never like people who do booze. I mean, Mar- Marjorie drinks. She loves to drink. Every time we go out somewhere like last night, two drinks. Every time, two drinks. Not three drinks, not one drink, two drinks. And uh, You know, you got to love her because remember when we went to Europe? I drank, but you drove. Yeah, but I, I got to love her because I'm married to her. I have no other choice, <laughs> you know, uh, but I love her, you know. It's like I love you too. You're sweet, you know. Uh, but you know what? At least it's just two drinks. Well, it's two drinks. But um, well, the other night we went out. We went out with my business manager, and I actually had wine for the first time in I don't know how long. And he he knows how to choose wine. And I said, "Well, let me taste that." And it was so good, I actually had a glass of it. You know, I love. Nice. It was really, it was really good. But, uh, but, but, girlfriend loved it more than I did, and I had to carry her home. You what know. was? No, that's what, not good. <laughs> huh? What wine was it? I don't know what it was. It was something from Italy, and he knew the brand because he had been to the actual winery in Italy. You know, uh, okay. which was fine with me because normally I can't the, booze. I don't. I don't know. I just don't like the taste of booze. Last night she ordered a, a mojito. Oh, those are so good. Like <laughs> well, yeah, but I tasted, and it tasted like sweat. You know, it really, I, it didn't taste very good. Vodka well, you know, there's certain drinks that if they taste really sweet, that they don't, you don't taste the alcohol. We call those drinks Jim Jones Kool-Aid because they just knock you off your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so, uh, uh, but we, we were talking about smoking. You never smoked, did you, Schmoody? You, never. never. And then my brother, Eric, who's been clean and sober 17 years, it'll be this March that he's been, uh, he quit two years ago. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I, some, they say it's never too late to quit, but I think uh, for, in, in uh, Mike's case, it's too late to quit. Nah, nah. Whatever, no. whatever's percolating in your body right now from smoking is already had a good when, head start. When he's you know? the oxygen huh? and... You know, when he's got an oxygen tank that he's got to roll around behind him, yeah. he'll stop. Well, blow down your tail. Because, blow because down it, your it's, ass. oxygen is very flammable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't want you to smoke around. Now, on the other hand, Scott is a drinker. Right, Scott? Yeah, you were talking about it. I had to go get another one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? Drinking milk. That looks like milk. 
Yeah, it looks like milk. That's what I tell my wife. Well, what is it? It's a. Uh, it's weird. You, you'll laugh, but it's it's a it's a it's a dairy creamer, right? Yeah. Like a white cocoa chocolate uh, dairy mm, creamer. In yummy. Your coffee. Yeah. And I put rum in it. It's great. Wow. Well, I you know instead. You know what I did? I That's a good man right there. That's a good man if you put rum into creamer. That's some years, good shit. Years ago I did I, it, it I, tastes good. It tastes good. I like it. Years ago I did create a drink that I that I liked and it was uh are you ready for this? It was rum, Coca-Cola and cream. Yeah. And it it I called it a booze egg cream. Cuz we have a thing here in New York called an egg cream. Which yeah. is, you know, is in a very nice uh, drink if you ever. It, it, it's not booze. It's uh, you take. Uh, what's, what's the chocolate stuff that they use? Uh, for you, be, you, you bet syrup. You bet. That's it. And you put some. You put so much you bet syrup in it. Uh, let me show it here so I can. Uh, I can show you what I what I mean by it. Um, here, yeah, but, but that much you bet syrup in there, and then you put about that much milk, and then you fill the rest of it with salsa. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you stir it, and then if you do it just right, if you, I think, it, I think I found if you put the milk in first, the uh, you bet syrup in second, and the it was the difference between whether you got a white cap or whether you got a brown cap, yeah. and and that was the national drink of New York City, and kids loved it, and you yeah. know, and it doesn't have an egg in it, doesn't have an egg in it, right. looks like an egg though. No, it doesn't have an egg in it. And you say, why do they call it an egg cream? And it's because it was invented in Brooklyn. And the guy called it an ah creme. Okay, with cream. All right? It, it, My son and, would enjoy and, that. And wait a minute, an ah creme. And kids, because they bastardized everything, started calling it an egg cream. Let's go get an egg cream. So. I don't think anybody in Brooklyn spoke French in those years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, but I'm sure some guy. I'm sure some guy who owned a who who owned a, a what do you call it a a, a soda fountain, uh, thought that it was fancy to call it not creme, yeah. you know. Well, Flatbush, there, there we feel that there wasn't any other area of Brooklyn other than Flatbush, you know. Yeah, Flatbush is Brooklyn as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, what are you doing? Uh, how Christmas is coming up in year? Uh, how old's your kid now? Kathleen, uh, he just he just turned twelve, and he is almost toe to toe with me. He's probably about five, eight, five nine. Now I can't remember. Were you taller than me, or we were just nose to nose? No, you were tall. No, you were taller than me because you have to be at least six one, six. I don't know. Oh, oh you no, were I'm, taller than me. Six, I'm, one, I'm, six, I'm, I'm I'm shrinking now. You know. Uh, uh, but uh, no, I was six feet, I think, at the time. So, and you were six feet. And we right? were eye to eye. Yeah, we were eye to eye. Yeah, uh, and and um, uh, I never went out with a woman that tall. I always liked short women. You yeah. always short brunettes. Remember, we'd be in the uh, the uh, Acura, and yeah. I know your girlfriends when they got in it, when they sat in the passenger seat, you, they were almost in the back seat because I would kick the seat way back because my legs are 36 inches long yeah well you would know when i was going out with somebody else because the seat was up forward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but remember when we'd pull up to the apartment and sometimes you'd go to check the mail what i do is you know i would fuck with alex I'd do is i'd move oh, yeah. my oh, seat yeah. up and then i'd move his way up so that he oh, couldn't tell yeah, that yeah, i'd yeah, moved it yeah, up and yeah. then when he'd come back from checking the mail yeah he would try and squeeze between the seat and the um, the steering wheel if we weren't turning the heat the seat heaters on during the summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were a real cunt. Uh. I was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? Hey, if you or Marjorie or both of you ever needed for me to kick someone's ass, oh, you do. I it. will fly out. Oh, there. she do it. She did. Yeah, yeah. She's my, she, you know how you know how you you some but for, people have friends who are gangsters who will take care of business for them. I got her, you know. I got you still back. Yeah, yeah. Because she got mad at me on a couple of occasions, really mad. I mean, hot raving mad, and it scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Just scared the, because she could beat the crap out of me. 
And, you know. But you know what? When I was a kid, I, I got into a fight with two kids, and immediately afterwards, I felt awful, awful. Oh, well, you're not a... You I mean, if I had to defend myself, I could do it. Yeah. You know, a man... But I would never just go out of my way and beat someone up. A man cannot fight back. If he fights back, he's going to be wrong anyway. And when the cops come, he's the one that goes to jail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell no. You know what I would tell the cop? The bitch ran into my fist five times. You feel me? <laughs> she crazy. Uh, cops don't go for that one. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, so we were talking about smoke. You never smoked, did you, Schmooty? Never. Nope, I never did because I was an athlete. I mean, once in a while when I would hang out with my brother, Eric. Yeah. Maybe I would, but other than that, no, you know, I just, you know, when I was a kid, you do stupid stuff like that, but nope, never, ever got into it. Yeah. It's yeah. a cigar named Eric. Is there a cigar named Is Eric? <laughs> yeah, it, it was, uh, and, and the commercial was this Nordic, uh, you know, this Nordic guy uh, on a boat, you know, uh, like Leif Erikson and uh, Eric Cigars. I, I remember the commercial. Wow. Well, anyway, you know, so, um, so, how, so what hey, do you, happy, happy belated birthday. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You, you sent a, 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 a thing and I, I knew who you were, <laughs> you know, Well, duh. but did you, I don't know who any of those other people are that wish me a happy birthday from Facebook. You know, it's lucky I found yours, you know, so. Oh, I'm sure you probably had thousands. No, not thousands. I had about about 250, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Every year it gets smaller because most people assume I'm dead. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, well, but I almost I almost am. You know, I mentioned, I mentioned a girlfriend today that it's really terrible living with somebody where you're looking at each other and wondering which one's going to go first. Uh, uh, don't say that. You Either know. one of you guys go, I am just going to be a snot-nosed boohoo mess. Well, if she goes before, if I if if I go before her, I'm going to be really mad at her. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Listen, I uh, yeah, but you know, so I I um, you know, as you get older, you start realizing. That, well, you know, I'm afraid of death. You knew, you know, you always knew me. I had great fear. Of death. I knew that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I still do. And and yet it it looms, you know. Of course, the thing that I that I never ever came to terms with was it looms every moment of your life, you know. Absolutely. You know, so uh, it, just because you're old doesn't mean that you have any more of a chance of dying than if you were younger. I mean, I I see people around me now dying in their late late fifties that I know. You know, and it's it's really it, it dreadful. Most of the people I know are dead. You know, and, and well, you know, at UPS, most managers that worked I worked with in Oakland either died right when they turned fifty five or within two years. What did they die of? Company benefit. <laughs> <laughs> it is most ninety uh, percent of it was heart attack. Yeah, that's what I would think because you're carrying stuff all the time. And while, Logistics does it to you, believe me. What did what, you say, uh, Kevin? Logistics does it to you. Logistics? Yeah. Dispatching, things like that. Really? It'll drive you crazy. Really? Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. That's right. why I work out. I work, you know, like, okay, so during, you know, December, yes, I'll, you know, have a couple cocktails, eat a ton of chocolate. But boy, come January, all that goes to the wayside because it's straight bodybuilding. Because but you know, summer's yeah. coming. Well, you know, I've come to a new conclusion about things. I'm not going to see a doctor anymore. <laughs> uh, I see no benefit in it, you know? Yeah. I mean, what? Come in and be checked up every year so eventually we can find out something that's going to kill you, you know? And every year I go, and it looks like they're padding the books. Here's the latest thing I got. My urologist, right? Um, this, my urologist doesn't like to use fingers and I don't blame him. If I were a urologist, the thing that would turn me off is having to stick my finger up people's asses all the time. So he goes, well, you know, we better check you with the, uh, sonic, 
Graham machine. So the first time I went over there, he did the, but just went over my body, looked at my kidneys, looked at my bladder, and so on, and went, eh, it, looks, Boy. it looks okay, and your your prostate, which I can see, uh, looks like it's, it's fine. It's not unusually large. And then, uh, uh, so this last time, but he said, your, uh, your, your, uh, what do you call it? Your, uh, uh, P PSA, the test that they give is up a bit. So, uh, why, why don't you do it another six months and come back to me and see how it does. So I got another test worried about it and all of that. And it comes in, it's three points less. Okay. So obviously it's going down. It's not going up. So now I go back to him. He checked me. I said, well, we should check you anyway. I'm going to stick a sonogram up your ass. So he, <laughs> so he sticks the sonogram up my ass. I'm not kidding you. He takes this wand. If you've had it happen, right? Uh, have you had it, uh, uh, Phil? Uh, but, oh, uh, yes. Where they I've stick the sonogram it, uh, up your biopsies. ass. Biopsies. You know, but no, this is, well, they use it for biopsies too. But anyway, <laughs> so he shoves it up my ass. He wheels around there for a while. Unknown number calling in. Who the hell is this? Hold on a second. Remember where I left off, folks, because I won't. Who, who's uh, a, who, who, who's, who's calling? <laughs> yeah, scope up the ass. Yeah, who's calling? Who just called? Are you there? Going once. Yes. Go Are you there? Hello. Yeah, yes. who, who is this? Allison. Allison. Where are you calling from, Allison? From Bayside. Bayside, Queens? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, Allison. Good to have you on with us. Uh, we can't. Yes. We can't see you. So normally we have people raise their hands when they want to talk. So just jump in whenever you want to. But let me finish the story. What story was I telling? It was up your ass. Scope up the ass. Yeah. He sticks this thing up my ass. I swear to you, for no more than maybe a minute, you know. And he looks around and he goes, "Prostate looks fine." And I would go back into his office and he goes. Well, come back in six. Let's get another PSA on you and come back in six months. And I'm going, wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's a blood this, test. this is like I got an A and now I'm still having to take another test. You know, it's just a blood oh. test. Uh, Don't you get your blood taken every six months? No, not every six months. I mean, well, when you grow up, that's what they do. Yeah. No, every year. Yeah. But what's happening is these doctors what are year? making so little because they're having to take the Medicare money that they're having you come back in six months. And then I looked at how much he would charge me to stick the wand up my ass. How much do you think? One minute with a wand up my ass. And I'm the one who's got it up my ass, not him. $1, what? $1,600. No, no, 400 400 bucks. 400 bucks, and you didn't even get a cigarette. And because my insurance won't pay for it, I have to pay, I have to pay 100 Okay, so he gets a hundred dollars of my money for me having him stick his goddamn probe up my ass. You feel like I, a piece of meat, don't you? And then he tells me, "Come back in six months." Fuck what did you. I have the other day, they they stuck it up the, uh, to go to the bladder. Uh, what do they call that? Stop oh, cystoscopy. Oh, those are wonderful. I had two of those. Oh, I yeah. always request the finger. It's much cheaper. Well, you know, Patrick's going. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, wait a <laughs> <laughs> it, Patrick, Patrick uh, knows knows about it because he's had them. But Patrick, you don't get them in quite the same way we do. You don't feel them, do you? No, I don't feel them. Who, who, wait a minute, who's got some sound on there? Uh, listening to a radio or something. Who, who is it? Is, is any of the people on the telephones? Uh, 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 no, I'm upstairs in my son's room, so right. it's dead yeah. quiet. Allison, I, Allison, do you have a radio on or something? Her circles. Allison, I'm oh. going to get rid of Allison because she's not even there. She's not even <laughs> paying attention. If if you don't jump she, right she in, I get rid of. Probably had her internet thing on. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but anyway, here here here. here, here Here's the thing. I just, you know, so I've decided I'm just not. And then my yearly checkup with my doctor. What is that? You know, it, it just, it's just an annuity for all of them. And then he no, says. They, for skin cancer, they, they, there's a lot of things they look for. Well, uh, I don't think I have any skin cancer. I'm never quite fine. <laughs> you know. I, <laughs> 
he even wears a hat inside. I mean, I wish I could say I have some terrible stuff. I got a torn meniscus in my knee, which is getting marginally better. And I today, today the feet aren't as numb as they were the other day. Outside of that, I got no problems. And, and you know, I had my heart checked, my blood. I took a blood test because my doctor found this blood test that was off the charts, right? And so I had to go get a blood test for the prostate, so I got the full blood test, and I sent him the results. My blood is, I, I just went down so low it was ridiculous. Now, I don't know if I want to take this. Is, is, is this Allison again? Allison, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. All right, we lost you there for a moment. Just lying. Uh, I'm, what? I'm the one who's recovering from cancer surgery. Oh, okay. How are you doing on that? I'm doing all right. Yeah, welcome. I have my pathology reports on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to Alex Bennett's uh, waiting room here. And we were kind of, <laughs> you know, everybody here. Well, uh, Scott doesn't have anything wrong with him, do you, Scott? I just got some results back from my cardiologist, but I don't want to get into it. Are they good oh, or God. bad? Are they good or bad? He doesn't have a heart. I have a cold. No, uh, no. Uh, well, wait. <laughs> his notes on it, I haven't really d had a discussion with him yet, so I don't know if they're good or bad. Just what what I've been reading on the Internet, it sounds like I'm going to die tomorrow. Well, so. wait, wait, wait a minute. Did he, like tonight. did he tell you he couldn't tell you over the phone you have to come into the office? No, he, he, he did say there's no significant change since the last time we did the echo. Oh, I, cardio oh, I've grammar, had those, yeah. And what, but, what, but, what is it you supposedly have? Like, I have a mild stenosis. I have a, what was it called? It was a, um, a mild dilation of the ascending aorta near the uh, sinus of Val Valska or something. I don't know. TMI, too much information. Yeah, you need them. Yeah. Too much information. <laughs> to translate that when you need them. Yeah, so it, it you know... I don't know what a mild dilation means, yeah. but but now, what, 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 Allison, what cancer did you uh, were you operated on for? I had uh, endometrial cancer. Oh, uh, okay, that's, that's the lining of the uterus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I knew you when you were young and healthy. You knew me when I was young and healthy. Yeah, go back a long time. Well, yeah. so does so does uh, so does girl uh, so does Schmoody here. Um, yeah, yeah, it goes back further. Yeah, yeah. You were thirty five when I went out with you. Really, thirty-five. <laughs> yeah, happy belated yeah. birthday. Well, that yeah. would be right. I was living in New York, and I was working where at uh, WPLJ, right? PLJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you lived in the Courtney House. Yeah. 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 Would I be rude and say Bernie I... gets his apartment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you remember it all, but I don't remember I you. Do. But then again, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember Phil either. You know. I knew no. you lived in that apartment as well. Yeah. I was, I first... <laughs> Did we have a midnight blue? <laughs> yeah, did we have sex? You mean not? Yes. Really? <laughs> oh god, do I feel bad. <laughs> See, they're all calling you now. They're and all the calling. Thing is the me too. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you Let me tell you about Get your lawyer. Get your lawyer. Wait wait Alex. Wait <laughs> Schmoody? This is the only place they got a hearing. Schmoody? Are you yeah, Schmoody. Yeah, Schmoody, are you there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did we have sex? <laughs> Jeez, you know, I'm not too sure. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I think I felt something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you and I were more like the opposites of each other. I was, you were like the the male version of me, and I was the female version of you. And yeah. I just knew my boyfriend hated you, and your girlfriend hated me. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You did leave a wet. And we were like whatever. Well, yeah, but we did have a good sex life together. Hey, girls, yeah. he left a wet spot in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to ask. You used to use my apartment, in Sausalito, when you were dating Red. Really? And I had to. It was my. Was I still living with my wife? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the reason I used your apartment. Thanks. Sorry for the wet spot. Uh, <laughs> you don't know what I was thinking. Uh, 
<laughs> oh boy. Well, remember when we were first going out at one point, we thought I was pregnant and I was yeah. kind of freaking out. And then of course, well, tell them, tell them, tell them though what, bless, bless your heart. Yeah. You listen, said, listen to this folks. Listen, wait a minute. And I would want to have my kid. It would be you. We, you, you were afraid to tell me cause you didn't know how I was going to react and how I reacted was right. because for a while there, we thought you were pregnant. And my reaction right. was, well, if so, that's terrific. It's great. Yeah. You know, because uh, I figured, you know, I wasn't by, by uh, uh, design going to go out and get somebody pregnant. But if somebody got pregnant, no. th- 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 that would be a blessing, you know. But you, did, weren't, yeah. pre- you weren't pregnant. So. No. And you know what? I, would, I was never, ever the type that would ever... I mean, trap anyone. For God's sake, I had Sean at 41. Yeah. By the way, if you look, folks, on your TV now, Bree is taking us through his office. Bree, are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Bree? He may have his phone. Uh, he may have hello, the office. Hello, hello. Oh, there he is. Where is this your office, right? Yeah, yeah. You're seeing my office space. Sorry about that. No, no. I, uh, really. I, wanted, to, I wanted to keep listening while I was moving Yeah, but around. wait a minute. But were you going to the coffee machine, or what are you... Or you're back at your desk now. Yeah, I had to go over to the uh, secretary and I had to see if the boss was in. But yeah, uh, because I'm, I have a card yeah. being shipped to me from my bank. So isn't, isn't yeah. this amazing, folks? This is coming from Dubai. You know, I'm living in the future I only dreamed about. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and he calls all the time. You know. So it, it, it's it's wonderful. And then we have Renee who calls from Hawaii. I mean, it's nice to have people from all parts of the world. So it is. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So um, so what is so uh, what is the prognosis uh, of your endometriosis, uh, Allison? They they, uh, they say they got it all. Good. I don't know. Congratulations. Yeah, I have my my wife has a friend named Anne who just had. A foot of her colon removed because of uh, huh. co- uh, they found colon cancer in there, and they removed it all, and they said they got it all. You know, so you, hope. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, uh, it's that's good now. And then I've got my ex-wife Ronnie out in Portland. How's she doing? She's uh, you know she's it's always a long process. You know, you never call it um, <clears throat> okay until it is okay. Uh, but they gave her. She had an operation for pancreatic cancer, which very few people get. Only about ten percent, but she qualified for it. And uh, they think they got most of what was there, but they found some stuff. Uh, in, they found some stuff in the uh, uh, what do you call it, the lymph nodes. And so uh, That's true. She, you know, um, she's. Uh, but she's. I think she's going to be okay. I hope she's going to be okay. You know, who oh, we just lost. Uh, we just lost Allison. Oh well. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, down there we got Renee's calling in from Hawaii. So now, r- right next to Dubai, we have Hawaii, which I think is <laughs> boy, that would be a nice flight. Yeah, uh, we can't see you though because your camera is someplace you aren't. Oh, I'm sorry that I. <laughs> Yeah, there's also your. Uh, I'm not going to pick up on Allison again. This is getting to be too much. You do, you'll have a full house. Oh well, I, I'm not going to because it, it's just it's too much, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, Renee is from calling from Hawaii, and she has a little bit of a spotty signal audio wise, which makes you sound like you're being auto tuned. <coughs> Yay! Yeah, and we just <laughs> lost we just lost Schmoody too. So yeah, uh, I hate to see her go. God, I you know, she was the girlfriend I had that I had a lot of fun with because she was just you, you never knew her, did you, Phil? No. Yeah. Uh, she was just she was like one of the it was like hanging out with a guy, you know, uh, a guy who you occasionally would do the nasty with, you know, and it was uh, we had a we had an interesting, really fun relationship. So. Yeah, thirty six inch legs that uh, hits the ceiling. She uh, she was tall, she was yeah. tall. Yeah, she was tall. Yeah, and and she. Uh, 
Yeah, she. Uh, I, but I, it was so much against the kind of person that I would normally have gone out with, you know. I know. So it was terrific that we, we were. Oh, uh, well, here comes Allison again. Let me give her a try. We well, hold on a second. When she, yeah, we 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 lost you there for a while, Allison. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, I was. I don't know what's wrong with this phone. Yeah. Well, it could be all yeah. all kinds of things, you know. The, 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 the operator come on and say, add 15 cents, please. The the gods of <laughs> Skype. Uh, let's see here. We have one, two, three. How about do we have full house? Yeah. Nah, yeah. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Oh, we're one, we're one short okay. of a full house. Yeah. Yeah, you get Schmoody back, we got a full house. Yeah, if Schmoody calls back, we got a full <clears throat> house. But Schmoody probably won't call back. She, she comes and goes, as it were. That was our relationship. She comes and goes. Anyway, um, <laughs> Well, let's, uh, for a moment, uh, let's talk about the fact that we're about ready to get a tax bill that is largely unpopular with the American public. Uh, now, that's not to say that anybody's – the only, the only tax bill the American public would be happy with is if we did away with them altogether. And we, uh, the only people that are unhappy are the people in the Senate that aren't voting for it. So they got to line up, and each one of them has to say how terrible it is. They got their talking points. They don't even know. You know, most everybody is going to get it. They've uh, read more of it than Trump has. <laughs> what do you know? Do you think Trump read that? Uh, that no, how many no, here? No. Just raise your hands. How many here think Trump read the tax bill? Would you raise your hand? Well, I wouldn't raise my hand huh? for that. I, no, I wouldn't I raise my hand for that. Yeah. But I can tell you that the Democrats you got uh, that are standing there, one after another, uh, telling you how uh, demonizing it is, how they're going to starve children, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Those guys didn't read it either. Uh, you know, they, it, just because it's a Republican bill, so you know what they're going to yeah, do? It, it, flat tax. tax. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, 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 what's going to happen here, is that this bill is going to cost us trillions. And so, where are we going to get the trillions from, Phil? With increased business activity, you'll have more people paying in tax. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, more, if you believe yeah. that, I got some swamp land out in New Jersey. Shit, I'm happy to sell you. <laughs> I do believe it, you know, and uh, yeah. Well, let, like, let me let me tell you this. You know where they're going to get the money from? Yeah, Is yeah. Gonna, they're going to kill Medicaid and they're going to kill Medicare. No, they're going to yeah. get the money from the no, senator. They are going yeah, to no, kill no, Medicare and Medicaid. People. The lower 50 percent only pay three percent of the taxes. The rest of it is paid by the uh, other 50 percent. And so, therefore, uh, they're going to get it from the other 50 percent. Most people are going to pay less taxes. They're going to uh, they're going to get. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 they're, they're going to pay. They're, they're going to pay more taxes. Let me explain something to you. What they've done here is a good bait and switch deal. OK, it's the oldest pawn, pawn, con game in the world. What you do is when people come home in, uh, in January, they're going to see more money, a little bit more money, not a lot, but a little bit more money in their paycheck. That's good, right? Yeah. And they're all going to be happy until a year from April because this year's April taxes will be the same as last year's. But the next year, they'll be under the new tax code, and all of a sudden they will see that all that money they got, you know, that they had in their paycheck, it's going back out in taxes. As of February... Uh, That's February. 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 Uh, yeah. Okay. Feb. Uh, month two of the next year, uh, the Republicans are saying that you're going to see more money in your paycheck. Yes, of course you're going to see more money in your no. paycheck. No, because there will be less pay money taken out of your paycheck. But right. a year later, in the ta when you get your taxes, you're suddenly going to see, well, you can't take this off, and you can't take that off, and you can't take off your household, your home interest on your pay uh, your home, and blah blah blah. Wait a minute! And by the time you're through, you're going to say, "Fuck you!" And that twenty five cents I took home uh, over e in each paycheck. Well, it just means that all of those write offs are usually for higher earners, not the people at the at the bottom. And so therefore the people at the bottom are actually getting a break and, and the higher earners may be paying more because they won't have all of those well, write offs. Well, I'm gonna, gonna do I'm gonna do look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna do fine in this tax bill. I'm gonna be yeah. just fine in this tax bill because uh, I'm uh, technically I'm poor. I'm not poor, but I'm technically poor. 
Uh, I'm not out on the street starving and begging and whatever, but hold on, I may drop in on one of you guys and ask if I can use your couch. Uh, but the fact mm -hmm. is that, uh, that you know, I'm, I'm not in a, in a bad way in, in any way, shape, or form, but, but, uh, I, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to make money off of this. I'm not going to lose money. That's according to my business manager. However, however, in spite of that, I don't like the bill. All right. Well, you know, you you don't like the bill because you're being fed lies by the Democrats. I see. Lies. Yeah. yeah. Now, by the way, we've been joined by Tim. Hello, Tim. You know what? Alex is correct. How's I think? Wait, wait, okay, Brene. I, I agree also with Alex. Yeah. Say, Brene, yeah. what were you saying? I said Alex is correct. It, it You're just refusing to believe what what Alex is telling you, Phil. And then to top all of this off, the only the rich people are excuse me, the tax breaks for the corporations and the wealthy, those are permanent. Good. The stuff that you sold your you sold What? What happened to her? Are you there, Renee? Is everybody else there? What happened? Everybody froze up all of a sudden. What happened? We lost everybody. Hold on a second. Uh, how do I get them all back? Are you there? No, they're all frozen. Oh, wow. Let me let me see what I can do if I can get anybody back here. Let me. Oh, they all went away. Oh boy. Well, uh, what do we do here? Well, we could call them all back. All of a sudden, I don't... Let me see if I can call somebody. Let me try calling Phil and see if he's there. Let's see. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I love, we lost everybody. No, apparently Skype isn't working. What the hell is that all about? Well, let me do something. Let me, let me, let me put my picture on here so that you... Don't, uh, you know, would you like to leave a video message? No, thanks. I don't want to. Uh, let me get rid of everybody. Okay. Let me get rid of everybody. Then let me hang up uh, my phone here. Wow, I've never had this happen before. I've never had this happen before. Okay. <sighs> sign out. Okay, now let's sign in. Let me put in my... Oh, sorry, we couldn't connect to Skype. Oh, there is something wrong with Skype tonight, folks. Wow, what happened to Skype? Wah, 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 wah. Let's see here. Retry. Couldn't connect to Skype. Huh. And am I going out? Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Hmm. Well, you know what happened here, folks? I lost my, uh, my internet. And, uh... It's a question of whether we're ever going to get it back. Uh, this is still recording, of course, and we'll be able to show you. Uh, but uh, we're stopping streaming. Sorry, sorry, an error has occurred. Uh, we lost uh, some um, stuff here. Let me let me just restart my reboot. Hmm. Let me reboot the. Uh, uh, da -da. Okay. Uh, let me reboot the uh, uh, the router and see if it uh, if it does anything. If we can get anybody back, wow, that's terrible, folks. I'm sorry, it's horrible. Uh, and it was going so well, yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's frozen. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, desktop. Okay, I don't, I don't have to worry about that. I think I take care of that later. Um, I'm waiting for it to reboot. Uh, we don't normally have this kind of problem go on. And we had, gee, we had such a nice show going for us, too. But we only have about 10 minutes left. So whatever happens, happens. Uh, let me see here. Come on. Uh, the trouble is my Fios router takes a while. And if there is no signal out there, it might take forever. So we don't know. Um, but, uh. We will see. Let's see. Are people sending me notes? Uh, do you want us to restart? Uh, no. Uh, and and uh, oh, Phil's calling. I can see Phil is calling. Uh, 
Yeah, I just I lost I lost my modem here. I lost my uh, internet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, just stay there. Maybe it might sign back on, and then it might not. You know. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Bye. Anyway, that's uh, it's uh, that's what what happens, folks. You know. Uh, it, 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 and it should happen because technically that's how my life has been going. Here we go. Now it looks like it got a signal and it, it should be almost on. Let me see here. Is it streaming at all? Is it going out there? Are we on? Do we know? Let me see here. Let me try this. Let me see if there's anything going on out there. No internet connection. Wow. We're, um, we've got a problem here, folks. Yeah. So, well, what do I do for the next 10 minutes? Thank everybody for calling. That's for one thing. Uh, and the, the, the show will be broadcast in its entirety or put up online in its entirety uh, in, a, you know, in a few minutes once we get off the air. Uh, that's a shame. Wow, it, there is a problem. There's definitely a problem with it's got to be a FiOS outage uh, because it's not. Uh, it's certainly not my my modem. These things are pretty solid and steady. Um, looks like we're just not getting a signal in here. It's out looking for it, but it's not finding it. Yeah. So I don't know what we what we do. Do I do I have my inner network going here? Let me see. Let me see if we have, yeah, we have the internet work going, so. Um, who knows? Um, stop broadcast. Well, I, I could stop the broadcast, but I can keep it recording, too. So that I would, uh, I would keep doing so that uh, people can hear this on the replay. Uh, and I don't, I don't know what to do. Um, no, it's, there's, uh, there's something wrong with the uh, internet out there. So, uh, we will just have to, um, uh, let me see here. Let me see if this works. I'm, I'm trying a whole bunch of things here, folks, for a second. So, don't mind me. Uh, connect to server. Um, let me see here. 157, that's what it is. There we go. Is it there? Do we have a signal on our, uh, our network here? Is our network working? Yeah, our network here in the apartment is working. So we're fine in that respect. Uh, it has to do with the signal leaving the building. So it's not the modem. Uh, so, you know, what the hell? Uh, I, just, uh, I just wish it were uh, not a problem here. Uh, let me see here. Anything else I want to talk about? Yeah, well, you know, um, that's about about it i just got to keep going for a couple of minutes here uh although there's no signal going out so i'm wondering if i shouldn't just say goodbye to all of you and let jack come in in about five minutes and and do the show and if he uh, isn't uh listening for it uh i hope he will and i hope that you people well nobody's listening to me i'm talking to nobody uh hi uh, but uh, this will be in, on the recording, so there's a there's a there's, something's better with that. Anyway, um, I'm uh, I'm trying to. What happened here? Uh, this this went out down on me too. Here, there we go. Now yeah, we're fine. Uh, do, 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 do. And we're 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 about to uh, call this whole thing a wrap. I think. Uh, and and thank all of you for having uh, having joined us this evening. Uh, let me see here. Let me start playing the theme, and we'll call it. Uh, we'll call it. We'll call it off at this point. Uh, I we as we say technical difficulties. I don't know what's happened to the internet service that we get here, but we ain't getting it, folks. Ain't getting it. So um, I thank you all for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, hope that uh, you've enjoyed being here. And I hope that uh, my, uh, my modem comes back up soon. Who knows? You know, there's no way of telling. Although I could, I could use my phone. I can get online using AT&T. So I can check and see what's happened to all my wonderful stuff out there. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us for what show we had. 
Uh, it's just another technical glitch today that's all part of the life that is Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. Well, I, I don't even need to tell you to stay tuned because none of you can hear me. Just, you know, there'll be a program after this, okay? Have a nice night, everybody. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.